Hi, and welcome to the third video on rendering fur. Um, this will be a rather longer video. Um, there's no one way to do this. There's a lot of options involved that you'll have to make a decision on as to what course that you're going to take. Um, we're going to go through uh, lighting, rendering settings, as well as uh, some different ways to uh, achieve shadows on our fur. Um, first thing to note is um, your lighting with fur is very, very important. Um, what I have here is um, two rim lights on here and a, uh, a fill. Um, there's a little bit of collar on these as well. Um, some warm and some cool just make it a little bit more interesting. And um, there's a render here of just the default lighting set up on this. Um, another thing is I have an IBL here in the back. Um, this will be useful for, um, or used for uh, primitive fur, if you, ch if you choose to go that, which I'll talk more about primitive versus uh, volume in just a moment. Um, on the IBL, I have the primary visibility turned off because I don't want it in my renders. And uh, one thing with uh, an IBL and fur is it tends to uh, be a little bit strong with fur. Um, also, um, you can adjust your IBL if it's too strong to begin with. Um, you can see here, um, this is the IBL added. Um, it's a little blown out, lose a lot of shadow information, uh, makes it look really flat. And you can see here with the IBL adjusted, um, uh, brings it down a little bit more even as far as um, brings in more shadows here and doesn't make it look quite as flat. And by doing that, I've turned on um, adjust final gather collar effects and I've turned down the collar gain. Um, you could also adjust um, your final gather in your render settings. Um, right now I'm using uh, Mineral Ray. Um, have final gather on here. You could adjust it here um, and turn down the effect there. I'm also using um, Ray Trace Shadows. I have this just um, on at a default. There's no light radius or additional shadow rays being cast because um, I don't need them just at, for working at this point. So, um, just it just increase render times unnecessarily and um, once those are all in place there's um, a couple things you can do if you're going to use uh, fur primitives and the way you would change that is up here in fur and fur render settings you'll open up it'll bring up your default fur globals down here under mental ray you can change from fur primitive to volume fur and I'll show more with volume fur in just a moment but right now we're going to talk about here primitives um, also go over these also here in just a moment as well but if you're using fur primitives and I can show what a render with fur primitives looks like as well um, one thing you'll notice is um, it's very sharp. What for primitives is, is at render time, it's going to actually draw in geometry for all of the individual um, furs that are there, um, actual geometry. The um, one way that you can handle shadowing on fur is by selecting your light, going to fur, and under fur shadowing attributes you can add to select the light. Now on this uh, light down here you'll notice under fur shadowing attribute or fur shading and shadowing we have a new uh, options here uh, which is self, self shade, self shade darkness, uh, back shade factor and the back shade darkness. Now what these are going to do are govern like from the tip of a, the hair or the fur up or the base up to the tip um, how dark it is as well as how far up it goes this is useful if you're using um, for primitives because you can use it to fake ambient occlusion for one you can use it to also fake self shadowing one way you wouldn't want to use it to fake sh self shadowing is if you had a profile shot of the edge of the fur like uh, grass on a cliff or someone's hairline um, it would work on someone's hairline now if you want them to have like dark collared roots um, but like on grass it would look very odd because um, people would see it and th they wouldn't it wouldn't make sense whereas you know there's light hitting that was their shadow there um, but it is one way that you can uh, manage that um, you would probably want to increase uh, self shade if you want to make it darker um, back shade factor um, would be the darkness between them 
So that's one way that you can handle those attributes or you can handle that shading. Um, another one is if you decide to go with volume fur, we'll go up here to our fur render settings. You can change this over to volume fur. And one no notable thing about volume fur is it doesn't react well with final gather. Um, typically um, very well at all. Um, this is what a default render with volume fur on would look like. Um, so you would want to either just disable um, its final gather receive like I showed earlier on those fur feedback nodes or you could just turn it off in general um, if you know you're going to render the fur separate not in frame like you should be. Um, and under volume fur one important thing to note is on our for description now under middle ray we're going to notice under volume for tab here we're going to have some options samples and motion samples um, these are going to be um, if you're having animated fur um, you, you may want to turn this up to uh, about eight um, it just depends on the shot how how much the type of motion, how quick and whatnot it is. In addition, on that note, in your render settings, um, one good feature for that is um, using rasterizer. Um, that's typically advised. Um, I've, I've read that you get less flickering, um, possibly with using the rasterizer uh, rapid motion also your samples and your motion samples are going to have to do with that as well um, but the reason I originally brought this up was I wanted to talk about shadow density scale um, what shadow density scale is is based off your scene size and when using volume fur it's going to govern how much light is allowed to pass through the fur um, this is very useful when achieving self shading getting a really nice realistic look with volume fur um, I wanted to show as you increase the volume fur um, at a higher shadow density with uh, no final gather this is a shadow density scale of 14 with no final gather um, you can see what a nice soft look this fur is starting to give you again we're not going to use we're just looking at shadowing right now we're not going to use this look for the fur um, we, but it is important to go ahead and get your lighting and your render settings in place now so when we're grooming um, which we'll be doing in the next video um, what we're seeing is going to be as accurate to our final result as possible um, it's also good to go ahead and by setting up our render settings and getting everything in place now uh, we can also help decrease the render times when we're um, looking at things when we're grooming the fur and we'll save a lot of time in the long run Um, that being said, uh, there with the shadow density scale, um, you, you'll, you're going to want to decide before you move forward, um, typically I like to at least, wh which one I'm going to use. Um, try to decide now so you have everything in place and you can move forward um, with one or the other and when you're looking at things uh, while you're grooming the fur, um, things aren't changing around a lot because obviously with or without... Um, you know the volume for you know they, they do have quite a different look the volume for does look a, a bit softer I think um, one other thing I'd like to talk about is um, if you're moving around if you have any type of uh, collar maps in here I'll go ahead and talk about this um, if you plug in any maps or anything and you're moving around to uh, different computers or whatnot um, or different scenes the, um, you can update your maps really easily even if you have your project set you, you can still run into this problem but you can come up here to uh, select your uh, fur and um, come up here to update fur maps and that's going to update all your pathways to the um, current um, path <laughs> of where they're at um, on the computer that you're working on um, so 
with that being said, um, go ahead and take a look at uh, which way you'd like to go there. And um, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, transferring our maps, uh, our collar maps, if you want to use any of those from the original textures that you have or plugging those in. We're just going to take a look at uh, grooming our fur and all of these attributes here. Um, and we're going to get a nice look as to what we're going for with our fur. So uh, see you next video.